Welcome to Binge Watchers, where we talk about the stories and characters we love and the shows they live in. My name is Ron, let's do some news. I don't have an intro yet, but if I did, it would be playing now and, and then I would... You get it. First stop, stop calling The Walking Dead spin-off a prequel, you guys! God! Robert Kirkman, the creator of The Walking Dead, has been talking about the upcoming spin-off recently and explained that it's not going to be related to the comics at all, but will expand the universe of the TV show. Even though the new show will start earlier in The Walking Dead universe timeline, it will eventually catch up and run concurrently with the main show, with the previous seasons at least. And if you think about it, Rick went into a coma when, as far as we know, the outbreak hasn't happened yet, and woke up when everything had already fallen apart. And even though there are clear signs that somebody was taking care of him, the people he meets after he leaves the hospital reference a time frame of about two months since the world went to shit. So the spin-off might show us early signs of the outbreak and have a few episodes take place in the world before the all-out zombie apocalypse, and into that same time leading up to Rick waking up. I'm guessing that at least the entire first season will be before the main show's timeline. Kirkman has also said that the spin-off is going to be its own show and that you don't have to have watched The Walking Dead in order to get hooked on the spin-off. But there will be a lot of fan service, which I love. Like if they find themselves in a situation similar to something that we've already seen on The Walking Dead and we kind of know what's going to happen and we'll be saying like, no, they have, and then they'll do something different, and it kind of winks to something that happened. I like that sort of thing. Seinfeld, one of the most important sitcoms or TV shows in general, will be available to stream soon, somewhere, but not on Netflix. Even though the mother of all streaming services did see a demand for Seinfeld, the price tag was apparently just too high. I just want to remind you that last year Netflix has paid over a half a million dollars per episode for Friends, making the total over 120 million dollars for 236 episodes. But Sony, who owns the right to Seinfeld, wants more than that. So with Netflix out of the run, it's probably going to be either Amazon or Hulu. Personally, I'm hoping it's Amazon because lately I've been seeing just more reasons to get Amazon Prime. I do like Seinfeld very much and I recognize how important it was and how you can still see its effects on television today. But to some, not all, some of you hardcore Seinfeld fans out there, I would like to point out that it is possible to love Seinfeld and the UK office for that matter without being a dick about it to people who don't. I would prefer walking up to a Supernatural fan and tell them that I hate Sam and Dean or to a Doctor Who fan and tell them it's just a stupid kids show and have them probably tear the flesh from my bones than walking up to a Seinfeld or UK Office fan telling them that I don't like the show and then having them roll their eyes at me and saying, ugh. You just don't get it. Not everybody have to like everything and one thing can be funny for one person and not funny to another, regardless of getting it. For the record, I like Supernatural, I am seriously considering of getting a TARDIS tattoo, and I do like both Seinfeld and the UK office. Six new supporting characters have been announced on Marvel's Daredevil, and they are Rob Morgan, who will play Turk Barrett, a small-time criminal in Hell's Kitchen. In the comics, Barrett is the same small-time criminal that is pretty terrible at being a villain. He steals both the Mauler and the Stiltman armor at different occasions and gets his ass kicked by Daredevil both times. Even when he offers his services to the Kingpin, the Kingpin says, I don't employ idiots. We still don't know what version of this will find its way to the show. Matt Gerald will play Melvin Potter, a machinist caught between a rock and a hard place. In the comics, Melvin Potter was a costume designer that held a grudge towards costume superheroes. So if you're a plain clothed or naked superhero, you're fine. He constructs a costume that works as sort of a body armor and calls himself the Gladiator. Again, we're not sure which version of him will be in the show, we just know that he's a bad guy and not a costume designer, but a machinist. 
The other characters that were announced don't have as clear of a connection to a specific comic book character, but we do know that they will be siding with the Kingpin and they are Peter Shinkoda as Nobu, a Japanese businessman with an agenda of his own. There are speculations that he's linked to the Hand, an order of ninjas that Daredevil sometimes fights, Wai Ching Ho as Madame Gao, a powerful woman running her own trade, and Nikolai Nikolaev? Seriously? and Gideon Emery as Vladimir and Anatoly, two Russian brothers looking to forge new names for themselves in America. I'd probably forge a new name for myself if my name was Nikolai Nikolaev. That's kind of like my name would be Ron Ronerson. No offense to anyone named Ron Ronerson out there. Super, super excited about this show and I fully expect to watch all of it within two days of its release, which will be on April 10th, on Netflix. There are actually more things that I want to talk about, but I'm not feeling so great, so I'm gonna cut this short. It's weird, a lot of the times when I watch other people on YouTube on, on their shows, and they say something like, uh, I'm sorry I didn't make a video, or I'm making this video even though I'm not feeling so well, like recently I watched a video by Jeremy Johns where you could clearly see that he's not feeling so well, and I'm always thinking when I'm watching those videos that like it's not the end of the world it's okay for you not to make the video if, if you're not feeling well but now that I'm making videos and I've committed myself to making these videos it's it's really kind of hard not to make the video you feel guilty and I think that's I think that's a good thing anyway please feel free to leave a comment down below on anything we talked about get a conversation going, and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're finding binge watchers for the first time, welcome, we're talking about TV every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, with reviews, stories, news, all kinds of great stuff, all for you fellow binge watchers and TV lovers, so click that big subscribe button to join in on the fun, or check out some of the other videos on the channel. Keep binging, and I will see you next time.